morning, church. Uh, welcome to Vernon. My name is John, and I'm the pastor here at Vernon. Uh, and uh, we welcome you if you are a visitor. There's ushers floating around. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask them. And also, we're joined online by our worshiping community as well. And so, Jeff, can we, uh, can we wave to them real quick? Everybody give a wave back there. Welcome. Friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We have one brief announcement, and then we are going to worship our risen Savior this morning. Just a couple of quick announcements with regards to the council. Now, we did sent out the constitutional changes this last week. Um, If you would please try to review that before the May 15th um, congregational meeting. Um, We're also going to be sending out a survey this week, uh, the first of a handful of surveys that we will be trying to get congregational input in. Uh, feedback as to um, how we want to update our governing documents. Also, uh, just again, a reminder for council votes um, is on the May 15th congregational meeting. Um, Council members, if you would please stand up. So we have several open positions. Um, The the individual positions that we're voting for this this, um, year is the VP of Personnel, Treasurer, Education, Youth, Fellowship, Worship, and Music. If you have any questions and or would be interested in um, filling any of those roles, reach out to any of the individuals who are standing or myself, or pastor, um, we'll be happy to share information. So we just ask that you um, pray and see if that is a position that you would be willing to help um, with the church. Thank you everybody and thank you the council members for supporting the church operations. Amen. Yeah, just a giant thank you to all of our leaders this Holy Week as we prepare to celebrate our risen savior. It is such a gift serving alongside all of you. Friends, I invite you to stand this morning as we sing to our risen Savior. Jesus Christ is indeed risen today. please have a seat. We remember on this day our Lord's baptism. We remember the promises made in our own baptisms. 
And so I ask that you would join me in prayer as we remember our baptism. Almighty God, we give you thanks that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, you cleanse us from sin, and you raise us to eternal life. Stir up in all of us the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. And we all say, Amen. Amen. I'll invite Al up. Please join me in the prayer of the day. <clears throat> God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading on this Easter Sunday is taken from the book of John, 
chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. <clears throat> she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Robani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And Tom, can you actually wait a moment on the video? I'm sorry. Quiet. You're doing great. The we had worked it all out, and then I threw a wrench in there. Tom and Jeff, thank you for running our tech. We love it. If I can invite the children forward for a brief moment, we're not going to have a, tr a true children's message, but come on forward. Come gather right here. You can smell the flowers. Don't touch them. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oh, is this for me? Oh, God loves you too, sister. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right, friends, here's what we're going to do. First, congregation, can we just, can we raise up a hand? I don't think we should pass up any opportunity to lay blessings on our kids. Can you lift up a hand with me? Let's lay a blessing on these kids. God, we thank you for these children, and we ask, God, that you would just watch over them, Lord, be with them, guide them, Lord. Let this church be a place where they learn about Jesus and where they learn how to share Jesus with the world. In Christ's name, amen. Yes. So, guys, it's Easter, and what's special about Easter? Jesus rose, that's right. So we're going to practice something. I'm going to do it once with the adults, and you guys are going to join us. You ready? Watch this. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So you guys say, he is risen indeed. Let's hear it. He is risen indeed. Are you ready? That's your part, my part. Here we go. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, this is for you all to take with you. There's some little bags that a number of wonderful people put together, some stuff for you to look at. And, and to use and color with and play with. And then also, after worship, outside, there are a number of Easter eggs all over our yard. So you guys got to help me pick them up. And one of them's empty, just like the empty tomb. Solid. Well done. Just like the empty tomb. Whoever finds the empty tomb one, bring it to pastor. You're going to get a special prize, okay? So let's see if we have enough. All right. Actually, how about we pray one more time? This is a repeat after me prayer. You ready? You guys ready to join me? Lord, thank you for defeating death and giving us life. Amen. All right, friends. Here, and then hang on to your bag because you're going to use that to collect Easter eggs. All right? Here you go. And once you get one, carefully go back to your seats. Or you guys can all sit by Mrs. K if you want, whatever you want. Where'd K go? Did she disappear on that one? Oh, she's right there. <laughs> Here we go. 
Here you are. Yep, this was, had a lot of planning and foresight. Yep. I like your shirt, buddy. Oh, sure. Perfect. Here, come get your bag. Come get your bag. Come on. Come get your bag. That's right. Praising God. There you go. All right, go back to your seats. All right. If we don't have enough, Miss Sherry is going to get you some more somehow. All right. She just found that out too. Okay. All right. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. I got plenty of bags. Don't worry. I got plenty of bags for you older ones. No more of that, buddy. No more of that. Just in case he fell asleep before the sermon. You are awake now. Did you get one? Okay. All right. Oh, and Miss Sherry will get you some more, okay? You're a patient dude. One for Owen and one for this little sweetheart right there. Okay, Tom, after all that. It was quiet when we approached the tomb. Days before, there was noise wherever we went. Crowds cheering, sometimes yelling. But now, in front of his tomb, I had gathered all my spices and oils intending to anoint the body. But when I got there, he was gone. Jesus changed my life. Ever since the day that I met him in Galilee, he rescued. And I followed him ever since, all the way to his death. But there was the tomb, and it was empty. My heart broke into a thousand pieces. I turned, and there was a gardener, and I asked him if he knew where they had taken Jesus' body. But I recognized. It was my Lord. He taught us that his sheep would recognize his voice, and I knew him. I knew him the minute he said my name. I dropped to my knees. What else could I do but cling to him? I never wanted to let him out of my sight. But no, he had different plans for me. He wanted me to let the others know about the good news. I ran as fast as my legs would carry me, shouting like an excited child. He did it! He did it! He really did it! Yes. To think that I had come to an anoint a dead man. And I left with proof that he is the overcomer of everything. I, all of us, can never beat fear, sorrow, sin, definitely not death. I say that he is. I know who he is. Oh, I know who he is. He said that he would rise. And he most certainly is risen. He is the Savior. He is. He is the one true God. <laughs>
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So again, welcome to Vernon. If you are a worshiper uh, who has not been with us throughout the last four months, we have been journeying through the Gospel of John, and we're getting near the end, everybody. There's only 21 chapters in the Gospel of John, so we're in 20. We're almost there. This past Holy Week, we've journeyed uh, closely with our Savior to the cross. On Monday, Thursday, we sat with him and his disciples and their families, his best friends, as they celebrated the Passover together. And on Good Friday, we walked with Christ to Golgotha. But this morning is, this morning is something different. I, I wonder what brought you here today. Maybe it was, uh, you know, Grandma asked you to come, um, or Mom asked you to come, or I heard Pastor wasn't going to wear a black suit for the first time in two years. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it was. Yeah, we're clapping for the suit. I don't know why you're here, but but we're all here together for some reason. On this day, in this place, we've all come together. We've gathered together. I wonder, Chris Peterson, where's Chris Peterson? Could you maybe turn my microphone down a little bit? I feel like I might get, I'm going to get loud in this sermon, Chris, and I'm worried about them, uh, you know. The story is something we look forward to every year, and in the church world, it's so interesting because we're preparing all these things. The office is working. Uh, All of our music leaders are working to prepare for this Holy Week. There's all this hustle and bustle, and it's hard sometimes to sit in it and to worship. But the reason we get so excited, the reason we do all this work is because this is the best story ever. It is the best story you will ever hear. It's the only story that matters, friends. It is the most important story. And the beauty of today's gospel reading, the beauty of Mary, is that the resurrection is not the end of the story. I wonder where you were when you first heard about the resurrection of Jesus, or perhaps where you were when you believed that it was true. Like deep down, you believe that God rose from the dead. The shock of hearing about the empty tomb, it can wear off over the years, especially in church work. You're doing this every year. You know the days. You know the seasons, the colors, the smells. How beautiful is it up here? We have an incredible team of people that decorate this altar to give praise to God every week, and and this week they've outdone themselves. My homiletics professor, homiletics is just a fancy word for preaching professor, my preaching professor, Caroline Lewis, who wrote one of the best commentaries on the Gospel of John. Caroline Lewis says, You know, uh, we have kept Jesus in the tomb when we fail to leave church and tell everybody that the tomb is empty. I don't know what you have planned today after worship. Maybe it's a brief meal. Maybe it's a party. Maybe it's a celebration. Maybe you're going to watch the Bucks game. I I don't know what it is. Friends, I encourage you to tell the world that the tomb is in fact empty. Christ rose from the dead. Mary did not have this problem. Mary ran and told the disciples, who, of course, had to see for themselves. Mary is the first person to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friends, the first preacher of Jesus was a woman. And not just in this gospel, but in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, the resurrection is told first by women. But remember, as they approached the tomb, they didn't think that he would rise. They had a struggle in faith. She was coming to anoint him. To anoint, as she said in the video, a dead man. The resurrection is only the beginning. In Mark, after his death, Jesus tells his disciples to go on to Galilee, where he will be waiting for them. And in John, Jesus hangs around to let Mary know that he's still there. And although he doesn't let her hug him or hold on to him, and and all of us, by the way, we would have all wanted to do that. We would have wanted to cling to Jesus. We had just seen him die. She had stuck around at the cross, and she had come to anoint a dead man, yet he was alive. She wanted to cling to him and never let go. Have you had that moment in your life when you just want to cling to Jesus? And so that's what Mary experienced, but she says, no, no, you must go. Don't hold on to me. You need to get out of here. You need to tell everybody what's going on. And so she goes. Jesus is glorified in this resurrection, and and he has a real body. Remember later in the story, he's at the seashore eating breakfast. He has a digestive system. Like Jesus is fully alive, and that matters. 
Because had he not been resurrected, everything that he would have said, everything that he would have taught, everything that he would have implored the disciples to continue doing would have at the very least been up to question. So Jesus offers them this resurrection, and it's something better than they can even imagine. Richard Rohr explains the resurrection this way, that Jesus' physical wounds do not disappear when meeting with Thomas is telling that the mystical, counterintuitive message of death and resurrection is powerfully communicated through the symbols, the symbols that we saw in the video. The major point is that Jesus has not left the human sphere. He is revealing the goal, the fullness, and the purpose of humanity itself, which is this, that we are able to share in the divine nature even in this wounded and wounding world that we are able to share in the divine nature even in this wounded and constantly wounding world. Jesus is saying, I am human, which means to be wounded and resurrected at the same time. We all are human and we are wounded, yet we are offered resurrection each and every day. Martin Luther famously prayed every morning when he woke up, Lord, let me die and rise with you today. Die to those things that draw me inward and don't share the gospel. Let me die to those things that focus on myself and not others. Let me die to those things that I think about myself that are not true. Lord, let me die to those things, God, and let me rise with you today. It's a mystery. It is is a paradox. It is wonderful that God offers us this. And then Jesus, in this story, he commissions Mary. Friends, listen, she's the first evangelist. Go and tell the brothers... I am alive, and oh, by the way, Mary, you, Mary, you, of all the people I could have chosen, John, the beloved, Peter, my rock, I'm choosing you, Mary, the person who was one of five who stood at my cross and would not let me die alone, the one who has been consistently politically incorrect according to the way the disciples thought she should act, accused of all sorts of things, often incorrect things, you, Mary, you are who I'm going to send out Mary needs some extra assurance that life and the hope that Jesus poured into her life is only the beginning. Mary's story turns things upside down for me. I don't know about you, but hearing that Mary was the one he chose, knowing Mary's story, it just turns everything upside down because I too am a sinner. I too am much better at messing up than I am at succeeding. I too can often ignore the face of my Savior and others. We all weep for what we had, for what could have been, for what is not, and our limited way of knowing and comprehending. But these words in the Gospel of John, they provide the foundation that give me just a little foothold of hope, a place to put down my whole weight, and a place my hope lies for eternity. And even though the mystery is great and the details are scarce, this is the most wonderful story that you will ever hear. I promise you. And we have no excuse We have no excuse for keeping it quiet. Why wouldn't you share this story with the world? Don't be worried about offending people. Tell them that our God rose from the dead. Go and shout it. There is more to this life than those things right in front of you. There is more to this life and the power over the other. Life is more fulfilling if you are selfless instead of selfish. There is an eternity of beings waiting for us to cross that threshold and share this good news with them. And we must be ready to give witness. The Apostle Paul tells us this over and over again. I give an account to Christ for Christ is in me as Christ has been offered to you. The Apostle Peter says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith and the salvation of your very souls. This is the Easter message. We have been redeemed. And I don't know about you, but I need to know that there is a reason for my life. I need to know that the things that I am striving for, the kids that I am raising, the wife I'm trying to figure out how to be a better husband to, all of it, that it has a point that we're called to be something in this world different than what the world offers, that we're called to actually believe that within each of us, not just our friends and family, but our enemies too, that the divine lives there. I want to be like Mary. I want to be an eyewitness. I want to go and tell the world that I have touched and seen and heard. We hear these same 
words in the first letter of John, later in Scripture, he says this, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim as the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with God the creator and with his son, Jesus Christ. And we write these words to make our joy complete. It was, it was joy. Sharing this message was a source of joy for them. They were bursting at the seams to tell everybody. The story is fascinating. Mary moves in three ways. I want to wrap this up by just pointing out something that's really interesting. In this gospel story today, thank you, Al. Mary moves in three ways. She moves from the Greek participle for weeping in verse 11, she's crying, to turning in verse 14. And then by verse 16, she's proclaiming. She weeps for the past. She turns when she is called by name. And recognizing the voice of her salvation, she proclaims his identity, Rabboni, Rabboni, teacher. And that's what we're called to do as Christ followers. Because there are long, dark nights where we are weeping. But God is there with us in the silence. God is there with us in the tears. And so we're called in our weeping to turn and then to proclaim. To proclaim that we have a God who has defeated death for us. A God who came into the world with unconditional and radical love available to all people, and we were so offended by that notion that we killed him. And a God who says, in spite of that, I love you, and I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you to save the world by loving them the same way I've loved you. Luke 7 says, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind recover their sight. Church, go and tell people this morning, tell people all week, not just on this Easter high, that Jesus Christ is alive. Tell them the story of Jesus, how he came to us as a baby, what he offers us in the way he lived. There is no longer anything between God and us. The temple curtain has been torn forever. It's been removed. And Christ's resurrection must propel us forward. It calls us into a new community, utterly different, please, than the surrounding culture. A community of love, grace, peace, and justice. For they will know, Jesus says, that you are my followers by the way that you love. Oh, that we will be a church that shares the good news in that way. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing to this amazing God. of a God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh praise Him, Alleluia, thou burning sun with golden beams, thou silver moon with softer gleam. strong, ye 
clouds that sail in heaven alone. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Thou rising moon in praise rejoice. And ye lights of evening find a Come thou fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, sung by failing tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy rechanging love. And oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above here's my heart oh take and seal it Seal it for thy course above. Will you pray with me? Oh, God, we give you our heart this morning, Lord. We ask, God, that you would use us, use us, Lord. You send us out into the world to tell the world about your resurrection and what that means for people, that new life is available. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Please join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the life everlasting, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, will you join me as we pray for our church and our community and the whole world? Let us pray. God, it's Easter, and so we celebrate your resurrection, and we look at the characters in Scripture, these disciples, Lord, who followed you. God, help us. Help us to run to the tomb and then go proclaim that you are risen, Lord. Help us. Help us to follow you that way. God, help us to share this message with the world, and help us, Lord. Help us in those moments when it's hard to believe that new life is possible, that it is, that death is conquered. Lord, in your mercy. God, I'm mindful that there are those in this room that despite this Easter message, they come in carrying pain. They come in carrying hurt. And so we lift those up to you, God. We have some within our own community here who can't join us today, God, who are struggling in mind, body, or spirit, God. We ask for healing, and we ask for your presence, God. And we ask you to use us, God, to be your presence in the world for those that need a shoulder to cry on, a hand to hold, 
someone to listen, or a soft voice of reassurance. And we lift up to you now those who are in our hearts and mind, Lord. Pray for Bev. Lord, in your mercy, God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for those who were able to make worship this joyful place to gather into this morning, God. And we thank you that you are a Savior who has defeated all things. We ask for the understanding, God. For those who hear this message and turn away, God, help us to pursue them in love, sharing this good news with the whole world. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take some time to share that peace with one another this morning. Let us give thanks to God for these gifts. God, I, I thank you, Lord, for the, the amazing gifts that you have bestowed upon this congregation, the way they are generous with their gifts, not only in their giving, God, but in the way they serve this church and the community, Lord. We're humbled by your provision, God. It's to you we give the glory. Amen. Amen. If I could invite my communion assistants forward at this time. So friends, you remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior was with his best friends, and Mary was probably there too, along with other wives or women who were following Jesus. Kids were probably running around, maybe even grabbing the microphone if there was one. Everybody was present. And Jesus was sharing this meal, this famous meal, this Passover remembrance, but during the course of the meal, he surprises them by taking the bread and blessing it and breaking it and looking them each in the eye and saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, the wine was poured and our Savior once again <laughs> surprises everybody by taking the cup and blessing it and giving it to all to drink, saying, this is my blood, a new covenant that I'm making for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Friends, will you pray with me the way our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, when you come forward here at Vernon, we ask that you meet at the center rail and then move your way around. Communion will be served at the rail. We have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available. 
And if you're unable to come forward, no worries. We can bring communion to you in your seat. This resurrected Christ offers himself to all people, and we offer this table to all people. Come and proclaim Christ's goodness. All are welcome. Holy ground here. 
You will hear my voice, I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of
Let us pray. God, just as we get excited for Easter, Lord, I pray that the same excitement fills us up as we approach this table, this meal that is offered to us at a great cost for you, so freely given to us, Lord. And I pray that you would encourage us, that you would equip us, sustain us, that we can go out into the world and share this resurrection message. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Friends, friends, receive this blessing today, and then let's sing to God real loud one more time. Do I got to come over there, Chris? Yeah? Do I got to come over there? Yeah, I'll come over here. All right. You guys are going to get a really close blessing. It feels different this close. Um, That's not true. Okay. Friends, since we're going to sing anyways, why don't you stand as you are able and receive this blessing this morning. May our incredible risen Savior Jesus Christ bless you now and forever. And may you share that good news with the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Christ is risen. risen Hallelujah. Let us sing to our Savior. I was so worried to have my mic on the whole time. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah, amen. And if we could have our children who want to participate in the egg hunt or Gail Davis or anybody else, meet us uh, by the double doors in about five minutes. We'll get started. 
And if you can, if you don't want to take the bulletin with you, if you want to recycle them on your way out, we'll use them for the next service. Thank you.